Hi everyone, welcome to Luis Cisneros YouTube channel. Today's polymer clay tutorial is about how to make a scorpion part two. We're gonna start with the claws and for this you're gonna need the six different pieces of clay and separate in different sections as you can see on the other side of where it started. And we're gonna need also three different tones. We're gonna use the same technique. We cover first the wire, we bake, and then we apply the liquid scoopies, and that way we can add the clay on. Between each section, we're gonna add um, this lighter clay. Um, this is the tone that we're gonna create it. That, uh, you can choose the color and we're gonna add like just a cylinder around her and we're gonna use our tools just to put it on then we will add the darkest tone to add this section of the claw this is gonna be the base so it's almost like a sphere that is gonna be on the base and we're gonna use the dotting tool just to texturize After adding more uh, liquid esculpi, then what we can do is add another um, lighter tone between the pieces. So it is the same that we used before. And we use the doning tool just to add a piece of clay. Then right after we have this uh, little part of the claw and we use just a piece of um, the darkest um, tone of clay and we add it on, we texturize using the same technique with the dotting tool. And this piece is almost like a, like a small tube and it is not really large so I use the needle tool just to take out um, the excessive clay that I have and I reshape with the dotting tool We're gonna use a really thin cylinder uh, of the lighter tone just to add between the sections. So in this case, because we're gonna start a new section, I add it on and I use the needle tool just to cut the excessive uh, clay that I have and uh, the needle tool just to cut it and the dotting tool just to texturize. Then, um, just to start, I follow the proportional chart um, just to get the shape of it. And then uh, I put in one um, claw, and then on the second one, that's what I do. I, I imitate the one that I did before and the same size. I create the shape, and then I cut it in half with a needle tool, so in that way I can put it on the base that I created. Don't forget to add more liquid esculpi. Uh, this helps um, so the pieces uh, stick together. One is already baked, so um, it helps like the new clay to really stick and it is easier to manipulate. Then right after we add our piece and we use the dotting tool to start texturizing and to give it a more shape. If you miss a piece of uh, liquid scoopy, you can add it on. 
try to not leave any exposed uh, gap so in that way it doesn't look like you made a mistake and use your fingers to reshape Now, using the um, smallest dotting tool, we're gonna start creating the texture. And as you can see, I just follow like a lot of uh, dots everywhere um, without leaving any space without the texture. And this looks really cool. So at the end, at the edge of um, the part of this part of the claw, it has a relief. So um, we're gonna create it using our fingers and pushing with the dotting tool. So we created this part. Another way to create it is actually adding more clay to it, but it's not necessary since it's gonna make the, the piece bigger. Also, we start creating the, the cavity inside so that way we can add um, the second piece and between of them we can add um, all the internal uh, part that uh, the crappy has that is the lightest tone that I uh, created too. So don't forget to texturize all the way around. Then we add more liquid esculpe. We add more of the red tone between the sections. And as you see, I just create a long tear and I just create like a donut uh, around it. And I use the dotting tool just to push it and flatten it that it goes all the way around between the, the cavity that we created in these views. After I even it in, in the entire cavity, I start creating the cavity again, so in that way we can put the lighters um, tone and create the ligaments or whatever is um, holding the two pieces of the cloth. Now um, I find it like this is the uh, most important part, so it is uh, what is inside um, the ligament, I guess, or the part that is. Uh, holding the two uh, parts of the claw together and this is the lightest tone that I created and again I, I created um, two long um, pieces and I just go inside the cavity and fill it with this clay. As you can see, it's almost creating like a dome uh, that is filling the cavity and I use the dotting tool and then I use my fingers just to smooth those marks. Then I go back in the first, um, in the base of, of the claw and I'm gonna add a little bit more clay just to create um, the relief at the edge, so in that way it gives it a more natural look. Then when you finish, you can bake. Let it cool down, so I'm gonna add the next section and for this I create almost a flat tier and I start creating the shape. So I create always the first one and then the second one I just mirror. Then I open it, cut it in half, and then I put it on just to make sure that I, I measure it correctly. And I add the liquid esculpe and I put it on. I use the dotting tool just to texturize and reshape and close all those gaps that I, it has and texturize all the way around without affecting so much 
the shape. Remember, we want to create texture, but we don't want to reshape so much what we accomplish. Also, don't forget the inside cavity, since we're gonna put more of the same ladder clay that we put before to connect the two of them. We texturize on the sides too. Then as we did before, we're gonna add the red tone just inside the cavity. So in that way, um, between the sections as we have done it before, um, I add, as you can see, a little bit of clay and then using the dotting tool, I flatten it until I get the same as I, we did before, um, that layer of red so we can put on the top the lighter tone. Use the needle tool just to reach the places where the dotting tool cannot and to flatten it. Then in the cured clay that is the lighter tone, we're gonna add a liquid school piece and that way uh, the new layer, it really holds into it. Then we're gonna add more lighter tone, and as you can see, I just grab a piece of clay, really carefully attaching it. And this is we're gonna start creating the texture that we want, that it is just lines that it goes across with the needle tool. Then we're gonna add a, a flat triangle um, just right on the corners and we're gonna use our needle tool just to place it uh, really carefully and texturize it. And don't forget to do it on both sides. Then if you want, you can add more detail at the back, creating a line. I'm gonna add more detail on the front of the bake um, parts that we had and this is because it has some uh, spikes that I like to put on. I put two strips of clay uh, of the same color and what I'm gonna do is with the dotting tool I'm gonna create the spikes. So I texturize, I flatten it up as much as I can and incorporate it into our base and then I start creating the spikes.
Using the dotting tool, I push the clay up uh, for some parts and I push the clay down in other ones, creating the spikes that I want. Then we have two more sections to add. We add more liquid SLP, just really carefully with the needle. And then we add uh, the red tone, just at the edge. So in that way, um, we're gonna start a new section and between sections, we always add this red tone. This shape is easier. It is almost a cylinder that it has a bigger uh, opening on the top and a smaller opening on the bottom. And I just created uh, just open so I can incorporate it using the dotting tool and affecting the shape right on the spot. After I integrated the entire clay and I didn't leave any gap, I start shaping the, the edges. So that way it has that relief on the top and on the bottom. Also, as you can see, it is more rounded on the top and is smaller at the bottom. Getting the shape right, we can texturize the entire piece. Then we can add another piece of red clay just around and the base. So we're going to start our last section. So this is the last section of our claw uh, on the bottom. And this is one of the uh, claws part. It is the bottom one, the one that, I, that it moves. It's the smaller one too. As you can see, I just use uh, a large cone and then I put uh, more liquid clay, so in that way I really hold into it. Every shape with my fingers and I tie it up and also give it the curve and the flat side that it has. Using my needle tool I just start creating the bumps that it has and the spikes. So in that way, I create the shape that it has. Following the proportional chart, I create the shape leaving a space so it can fit the bigger part that it is, will go in the in the top and also the different teeth there it has like teeth or um, spikes whatever you want to call it um, and I just created pushing the clay and using my fingers just to make them really dirty Don't forget to texturize and to not leave any fingerprints.
Then when you finish, you can bake. After we let it cool down, we're gonna start creating the body on the top. And um, this is almost the same as we did in the base. We're gonna create the shape following the different pattern that it has, the different sections. And we're gonna use our needle tool just to drop them and following the proportional chart for the shape. This section actually is wider than the one on the bottom, so it really covers it and it has an edge that you can see from the bottom. So try to create it like bigger. And the pads are a little bit uh, flatter too. So uh, you can see it from the side view. Then we're gonna cut them and separate them so we can work with them. As we did on the bottom part, we're gonna add in the different sections and between of them we're gonna add the red. Um, just the difference in here is that uh, because it has the curve, it is lifting the tail, it's gonna have that curve. And also we're gonna put on the Cure Clay Liquid Escopy so it really holds to it. We add the first patty and then a piece of red and then the second patty and then a piece of red and we're gonna create the piece of uh, red clay are getting bigger when we get to the center and we can texturize it with the needle too. This is the last section of the body and uh, we add it and at the end it has to be really flat edge so that way we can put the head and just make sure that I actually um, you really stick the red between the two sections so there's no gap so when it cures it doesn't break. In the bigger section it has a line across that is a smaller section that we're gonna just draw we're not gonna put any red um, we're just gonna draw it and we just follow the proportional chart for that. Um, again, the, the technique it is just drawing it first. Don't push so hard just in case you made a mistake. And when you are 100% sure of what you draw, then you push even more and you can use your fingers just to smooth it and just create that section. We're gonna start creating the head and for these we're gonna do a half dome um, that we're gonna put as the head and we just shape it with our fingers we measure it first just to make sure that it really fits and uh, one of the things that you have to make really sure is that it actually matches with the other previous section that we added so it does it's not a smaller or bigger also make sure that it matches the base and after you're sure that it matches we added the liquid esculpe just to really stick it on we're gonna draw a line just half of the dome that are to the front and this is gonna create uh, the, the base then when it gets closer to the edge uh, it has this curve and create that a small um, triangle at the edge and then in the middle it has this section that uh, it is where our eyes are going to be but you draw first the left and then you draw the right section then um, it has this other section too that uh, it is on the side and I draw first one and then I follow the, the same design and then you add this other section too that it has in the face. 
So as you can see, I always draw one side and then I follow in the other side, so that way it's really symmetrical. Then in front, we're gonna just draw these two sections that is extra clay and we're gonna just take it out. So in that way, it is actually the top part of the claws that it has as the mouth. So that's the section that we are creating. So use your fingers just to flatten it up and to not leave marks. After you draw it, you use the dotting tool just to create and the 3D uh, part and to flatten those um, marks that we left and create the relief. And that's what we are creating. Um, so um, you use the dotting tool just to uh, create the relief and then you use the needle tool to smooth those lines and to go deeper and the dotting tool what it's doing is actually just creating more relief and pushing the clay down and pushing the clay upwards it needs it uh, so we're going to start creating the other section where the other eyes are going to be Use your fingers just to smooth as much as you can so you don't leave the dotting tool marks. And keep going, pushing and pushing since the face is actually not that uh, curved, it is a little bit more flat. Creating the both sides are where our other pair of eyes are going and also using the finger uh, we create a more the sections and smooth everything even more and reshaping uh, so it really matches our body then we can press down so it really secures the piece and we continue pushing the clay down so it creates those reliefs especially on the sides where our eyes are going to be We're gonna create two sets of eyes. The first set is only a pair and there are two small spheres. And we're gonna use black clay, but you can use also the darkest clays that you want. And the third set that we're going to create is actually two pair of eyes since it has it on the side and um, these ones are going to be a smaller eyes. The first ones are going to be a little bit bigger and the other ones are going to be a smaller. Then when you have them uh, all together, you're gonna bake them. Using the needle tool, we're gonna create the holes where our eyes are going to be. So the bigger eyes are gonna be on the top. And as you see, I create a hole and I place the, um, the eyes. Use the dotting tool just to create the hole bigger first the needle tool just to create the hole and then the dotting tool just to make it bigger. Then insert the eye and push with the dotting tool uh, the eye so it's secure. Then we're gonna create the eye lead and as you can see it is really tiny just to cover half of the eye. We did it on one side, we do it on the other side. Then beside the mouth in that section that we created, we're gonna poke two holes with the needle tool and then we're gonna insert the two pair of eyes using the dotting tool. Just don't push so hard since the eye has to stick a little bit outside. 
Then you're gonna create on the other side the holes. Uh, and for these, I recommend that you do it from the top view so that way you can alight them. And using the needle tool, you're gonna poke the hole and then you're gonna insert uh, the dotting tool just to create the hole a little bit bigger and then insert the eyes Just make sure do not push so much the eyes because we want them to stick a little bit out Then we're gonna create it almost like an eye lead for the two of them There's only one and it's just because it has a cover on the top and We create that and really carefully without affecting so much the shape We use the dotting tool just to integrate that piece Then when you finish you can texturize the entire body For texturizing especially uh, the panels or the sections that it has the body I push the clay a little bit to the back because he has that section that I overlays and especially since it's curving I create that and also he has this gap um, that is almost a relief at the edge of each uh, section so I draw a line with the dotting tool and then I push it especially at the back. As you can see on the sides, it actually goes around and it has the same edge. So I do first the line with dots and then I follow them all the way inside and I leave the edge of the relief. I leave it without texturizing so much so that way you can see it. Then when we finish texturizing, we can bake. Then we're gonna use the same technique. We're gonna cover the wire with a little bit of clay. It is easy for me to manipulate it and uh, it doesn't um, dance so much the clay and it really holds really well. So I try to put as less as I can and closer to the wire pressing really hard and taking out the extra clay and then we can bake. We're gonna start building the tail and for this it has three identical pieces that we created three spheres with the darkest tone of clay and we're gonna add it adding the liquid SQP just on the cured clay and then um, the sphere we're gonna open in half and then we're gonna incorporate it into the curated clay and the tail that we have. I just uh, create a cavity on the top, so um, in the same as in the bottom. So in that way, um, we leave open that section that uh, we are gonna add later with um, with the help of the tools, I'm gonna to start creating the shape of uh, this section of the tail. And also, um, I'm gonna open more the gap between the body and the tail. So in that way, we can add later uh, more texture and more clay. As you can see, I start creating with the dotting tool the three reliefs that it has at the, at the back. Uh, if you see it from the side view, there are two, and from the front it has three, and uh, on the other side it has the two. These two on the sides is from one from the front and one at the back. Then with the dotting tool, we're gonna texturize using the same technique as the rest of the body. We're gonna add the red clay between the two sections, like the body and the tail. And as you can see, I just created a little bit of thread and I just inserted it, helping me with the needle tool. I texturize with the needle tool and take out the extra clay, go all the way around. Then we create a cavity where we're gonna fill it up with uh, the lighter tone that we created the same as uh, we created in the claw section. So we're gonna add these and texturize exactly the same with the needle tool.
Then we're gonna add more liquid SQP just to add the next part of the tail. And it's gonna be pretty similar to the piece that we put before. We're gonna shape the sphere into the shape of this section of the tail, cut it in half and then create a little bit of the cavity with the dotting tool and then insert it and incorporate it into the tail. Uh, using our fingers without uh, affecting the shape and the dotting tool just to um, close that gap. Using the dotting tool we're gonna create the reliefs and also the shape that we needed. Just base it on the proportional chart. Then we do exactly the same with the third piece. An easy way is just to draw with the dotting tool first where you want to create the relief and then press until you get the texture that you need. For the fourth piece, uh, you're gonna notice that it's a little bit different, and so it is a little bit longer. And texturize too. For the fifth piece of the tail, it is a little bit longer than the fourth and way longer than the other pieces. So we created the shape before putting it on and uh, we added and try to not fat so much with your fingers the shape. But if it is happened, you can always uh, reshape with, uh, with the help of the dotting tool. I draw the lines with the dotting tool first and then I start pushing the clay until I get the relief that I want. As you can see in the entire tail it has the same pattern. So it has a three reliefs at the back and three reliefs on the front and then on the side it has uh, two. So I continue the pattern the entire tail. We're gonna create the stinger and for this, um, I start with the sphere, I use the second darkest tone, and then I create a tear and I start along the tip until it gets really sharp. And I give it a dot curve and there you go. 
Finally, I just put it in place and I cut the tip because I want to add more detail and I add the lighter color that is the red that we use between the sections. And I just uh, use the same amount of clay and then I just uh, create a, like a super, super thin cone that matches the stinger uh, both and then I add it on until I incorporate it completely. If you want to create even more detail, you can add another join as we did between the body and the tail and we did the claws. So that way um, the stinger also has it. And then you can bake. Now we're going to create the claw and for this I start with the sphere using the darkest tone. Then I created a tear that is going to be flat on one side and I start tearing even more clay on one side that is going to join the arm. I always have a pair of spheres first, so that way I have the two of them and I create one, I bake, and then I create the second one, the same size and the same shape. After I make sure that they measure exactly the same way and they have the same shape and I they have the same size, I incorporate it. And the way that we're going to incorporate it is we're going to add a liquid SQP and then later we're going to put it on. So the liquid SQP goes in the second last section of the arm where the claw is going to be and that's where we're going to put it on. Don't forget to texturize using the same dotting tool that I used before. We're gonna create this part of the claw that I, it has these pincers and they're a little bit denty in the inside part. So we push the clay with the dotting tool using this um, technique where you push the clay and then you make the, the spikes or um, the sections that are these has. When you incorporate it, and just make sure that uh, you um, put it in the correct position that it matches and also that you follow the shape that you had before. As you can see, I didn't leave any gap and I continue texturizing at the front and at the back. If you're gonna use it as a pin, I recommend to use the garment just to put it in the position that you want it to be. In this case, it's grabbing the neck and it's holding with the pincers. And that's how I work with. Um, it doesn't affect the shirt at all. So I just use it as to know how to put it on. And I shape it and there you go. When you finish texturizing and put it in the position that you want, in this case the pincers, then you can bake without the garment. And that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Did you like it? Do you want more like this? Well, let me know and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.